All right, let's go ahead and jump on in and listen to just the raw piano audio. All right, so as you can hear, it already sounds really good. The point now is not to make it sound better, it's to really just make it fit better into a full mix. Quite honestly, if it were just going to be piano, I'd probably leave it just like this, add a little reverb maybe, and call it good. But we want this to fit into a full mix. The primary thing I'm gonna do when I'm EQing a keyboard or piano is look in the mid-range to try to find something that's a little overly resonant. A common problem with keyboards and pianos is that they just sound huge and they take up so much space in your mix. That can sound really fantastic when it's just the piano and maybe a vocalist going on, but when it's a full mix with dozens of instruments and inputs, you really need to thin it out a little bit to make it fit into a mix better. The way that I do this is take a fairly narrow EQ band and sweep around from about 300 to 2K and try to find whatever is the most resonant, then cut that a little bit. Sometimes it takes only one cut, sometimes it takes two or three. Let's take a listen and try to find some of the more resonant spots and cut them a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna open up the EQ, grab the low mid band, and sweep around. Right there is pretty resonant. You hear it kind of ringing a little bit, and so I'm gonna cut some of that. Then I'm gonna go with the upper mid band range. That right there is a little harsh. And now it feels like the low end is maybe a little overwhelming, and so I'm gonna look in that 300-ish range. So it actually ended up being a little lower at about 250. So that already sounds like it's gonna fit into the mix a little better. Now the last step I'm gonna do is just do a high shelf around three and a half to 4K probably, and give it just a couple dB boost to give it a little more air on the top. What you wanna do here is basically boost that shelf until you find where it starts getting harsh and then go just a little bit above that. And again, this is just a minor shelf. This isn't a huge boost in the high end. I'm just trying to make it so that it pokes out a little bit more up there. And just so you can hear before and after, here is without it. And with it. It's definitely a pretty minor change, and honestly, that's what we want. We don't want to dramatically change it. All we were really looking to do there is take out some of the more resonant pieces so that it fits into the mix a little better. So next, I turn on my reverbs, which put it in the same space as all the other instruments and vocals. If you want to learn more about my process for reverbs, I have a video available that should be available there. And also at the end of this video, I will link it there as well. Let's just turn on the reverbs now and take a listen. So all that really did is just draw out the piano a little bit and make it feel a little more natural like it's in an actual room. All right, that sounded pretty good. Let's move on to compression. So the biggest thing you need to know about compression when it comes to keyboards and pianos is that you don't always need to do it. That said, if you do want to compress it, it can be an incredibly powerful tool in placing your piano into your mix. The place I like to start is a four to one ratio, about a 10 millisecond attack, and then probably a 100 millisecond release. Then I'll just turn down the threshold until I get somewhere in the range of six dB of compression. Then I'll turn up that output gain just to make sure that I don't lose too much level. All right, that's totally acceptable to use. However, I really wanna show you how you can use attack and release to place the piano in a mix. The best way I found to think about it is how much of the actual hit of the key do you wanna hear, and then how far away do you want the piano to feel like it is in the mix. With the attack parameter, you're able to control how much of the hit of each note or chord you're hearing. A faster attack is gonna result in you hearing less of the individual notes and more of just the general sustain of the piano, and a slower attack is gonna have those individual notes and chords pop through more. Then when it comes to release, the best way to think about it is the shorter your release, the closer the piano will feel to you. Adjusting those two things depending on the song or the style of the piano player can dramatically help you in placing that piano in the mix. 
Now I'm gonna play a part of the song that has full band and I'm just gonna change those parameters and show you how big of a difference it can make. All right, so these are just the piano settings that we'd originally talked about. That's 10 millisecond attack and 100 millisecond release. If we want the piano to feel closer to us, we're just gonna take that release and make it faster. So let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, see how much closer that piano feels to you? It feels like it's right next to you. But let's say this song isn't as piano driven and we want the piano to just sit in the background. So let's take that release and bring it up to about 300. Now it's way back there. All right, let's say we want it back there, but we want more of the actual note. Let's take that attack and slow it down to 30. See how now those actual notes and chords pop out a lot more? All right, let's take that release and bring the piano back close to us. But let's say we want it close, but not as attacky. So let's take that attack and bring it down all the way to like five. See how it's close, but isn't as attacking you right now? All right, now let's bring it back to the 10 and 100. So for all the dramatically different feeling sounds that we were able to get there, I didn't touch threshold, I didn't touch ratio, and I didn't touch the gain either. All that happened there is I adjusted attack and release. I really wanted to use this example to show you how important the attack and release times on a compressor are. A compressor is really one of the most powerful tools you have in making an instrument feel more musical. Compressors are not just about making things less dynamic. You can actually use them sometimes to make things more dynamic by doing a slow attack and a really fast release. The, the transient will pop more than it naturally would. Using a compressor is one of my favorite ways to place things within a mix. All right, that's all I've got for piano. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. If you liked it, I would really appreciate it if you'd give the video a thumbs up. That really helps the algorithm show the video to more people. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'd be more than happy to answer them. If you have any ideas for future videos, leave me a comment about that too and maybe I'll make one. Also, as a reminder, if you haven't watched my video on reverb, it's gonna appear right there in just a second and I think you'll find it extremely helpful. All right, that's all I got. See you later.